Welcome to the REBT Advocates with Dr. Michael R. Edelstein and Tommy Bateman. Today we're going to take a fresh REBT approach to the concept of self-esteem. Let's have a listen. So Michael, today's topic is self-esteem. Uh, from an REBT perspective, what is self-esteem? Uh, to, to, to define self-esteem, uh, let's start with to esteem. To esteem means to think highly of and to Self-esteem means to think highly of oneself. Mm -hmm. When you have high self-esteem, that means you think you're a good person, you're a success, you're um, worthwhile, etc. So it's really evaluating your total self based on your behaviors. If you do well and you rate your performance and then over general generalize to yourself as a person then you get high self-esteem if you do poorly and then over generalize from your poor behavior to your total self then that gives you low self-esteem very good i i uh take a similar approach um uh, i see self-esteem as uh, dependent on your view of the facts. So A, the fact is um, you're considered uh, uh, not as aesthetically pleasing or not as smart as other folks. Um, that's maybe the fact that activating event that we cannot control. Uh, then we have a belief about it. Now the self-esteem comes in where, okay, the fact is you're not as aesthetically pleasing. Um, is it the worst thing ever? Do you fall into the first major must of I must do well and approve and win the approval of others or else I'm no good. In this case, I must look good to other people or else I'm not a worthwhile human being. Uh, and when you have that irrational thought and you have the activating event that other folks don't find you aesthetically pleasing or as smart or as whatever it is, uh, then the negative self-conception comes in and you have poor self-esteem. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. And uh, another creation of uh, poor self, low self-esteem comes from demands, must. Mm -hmm. I must do well and get approval because I would like to, and if I don't succeed as I must, then I'm no good. My entire personhood is worthless, and then that creates low self-esteem. So the take-home message here is that it's our thinking, what we tell ourselves that creates high or low self-esteem or any emotions, never the situation itself, never doing well or poorly or being approved of or disapproved of. It's always what we tell ourselves about that in relation to our total personhood. I like to contrast this to what I was reading today. In my office, uh, we have material for the people that come through, and one of them was a... Uh, kind of a pamphlet on self-esteem and they defined it as uh, what you think about yourself and I found it uh, a little misleading uh, because it said here are examples of good self-esteem one I'm smart two I'm um, pretty and I'm successful beauty of course is in the eye of the beholder and somebody else that who you can't control may not think that of you I agree that if you just think I am a smart person, I am a pretty man or woman, I am a successful person, then that would give you high self-esteem because you're evaluating your total self in terms of smartness, prettiness, or success. Mm -hmm. Now, a non-self-esteem way to look at it is to say, I act smartly at X, Y, and Z. I act smartly at work and I act smartly um, when I play baseball. So that's uh, evaluating your behavior rather than your total self. Or I am considered pretty to my wife or to my husband. So again, you're talking about more specifically what another person thinks mm -hmm. rather than identifying the behavior or the approval as your total self. You can look at it as am is a form of the verb to be. Am means 
equals I equal pretty or I equal smart or I equal success, and you don't. You're an ongoing process, always changing with many traits and behaviors. You do well at times and not well at times. I'm sure you've looked at yourself in the mirror and said, Sometimes you said, hey, I look pretty good today or I look pretty bad today. So we're ongoing processes. And to take that one time and say that defines a total you would be uh, would not make sense. And it leads to emotional disturbance. So always evaluate your act. That's good. That helps you to do better. If you evaluate your act as poor, then you figure out how to do better. If you evaluate what you're doing as good, then you figure out how to maintain it. But don't evaluate your total self. What is the uh, the REBT intervention for someone that comes in and says, all right, Dr. Edelson, I have low self-esteem. It's awful. I can't stand it. What can I do about this? Uh, that's a key, a key question. I'm glad you asked that, Tommy. And the answer is, Refuse to evaluate or rate your total self. Rate your behaviors and how you do at things, but don't overgeneralize to your total self and give your total self a report card. Now, if you don't do that, then the whole concept of self-esteem goes out the window, thinking highly or lowly of yourself uh, is gone, and that leads to unconditional self-acceptance. USA, unconditional self-acceptance, accepting yourself as the imperfect person you are, who at times does well, at times does poorly, at times is approved of, at times is disapproved of, but can still uh, accept yourself and considerably enjoy life no matter what. And uh, if I'm remembering correctly, it's one of the things we have to accept is I am a fallible human being. I have my good points and my bad points, but despite that, I'm still a worthwhile human being. And you're not basing this worthiness on some sort of uh, human rating scale, which, you know, I think you and I both studied uh, social science, and I've never been able to find a human rating scale. I don't know who the number one human in the world and the number seven billion is. Do you? Uh, no, I don't. And uh, you, you bring up a very good point. You really can't rate these uh, things objectively. For example, I am smart. Well, some people probably think you're smart and some people don't think you're so smart or pretty or successful. So there's no objective way of measuring your behavior. So certainly not overgeneralizing from, from the evaluation of your behavior to the evaluation of yourself. Now, you said something else interesting, Tommy. You said, I'm still a worthwhile human being. And there are various ways to look at uh, the self-esteem solution. And one is what you said, ex thinking of yourself as worthwhile unconditionally, no matter what, uh, as long as you're alive. You could say you're worthwhile because you're human or you're worthwhile because you're alive. And that's no lose because as long as you're alive, you're worthwhile. Or as long as you're human, you're worthwhile. However, if you want to be philosophically correct, someone could come along and say, okay, you're a worthwhile human being, but what is the evidence? And really, it's not an empirical concept. There's no evidence for it. It's just a definition. It's just a hypothetical construct. So the more elegant solution is to say, I'm neither worthwhile nor worthless as a human being. I just am. I'm alive. And... My task in life is what can I do to enjoy my life and be productive if it's a value rather than rating my total self. Very good. Now, is there anything else you wanted to add to this discussion? Because one of the things you just said is uh, 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 we can take the philosophical stance that I am neither word, worthy nor unworthy. In fact, that category does not exist. Um, we can get into argument about whether or not that's true or not. However, let's say that's the truth. Doesn't that assumption throw out the whole self-esteem concept to begin with? Uh, yes, that's exactly the point that we want to throw out the whole self-esteem concept because it will tend to get you in trouble because if you have low self-esteem, you feel bad and tend to be pessimistic about your abilities and which can become a self-filling prophecy. And if you feel good about yourself, that has certain problems. One is if you do poorly, then you go back to worthlessness because you're using the same self-rating scale. Also, it tends to lead to anxiety. 
because you never know how you're going to do tomorrow. So if your worth is based on your performance, then you have a task in life to prove yourself rather than accept yourself and enjoy yourself because at every moment uh, you may fall back into worthlessness. Also, it tends to lead to invidious comparisons of others. If doing well makes you a good person and someone else does poorly, then you're more likely to think you're a better person and uh, feel grandiose and less likely to listen to feedback from other people, which could help you do better. So there are many problems even with high self-esteem. Also, uh, it's well documented that many criminals have high self-esteem. They I can speak think, to that. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's right. Uh, they, uh, they think they're good people. They deserve what you have if you have more. So it's no problem to go and take it. Uh, so, uh, and also, if you say something that they don't like, that they feel is an insult, then they're more likely to feel you're insulting their worthy humanity and more likely to show you and beat you up or shoot you or something like that. So let's say we throw out the concept of self-esteem altogether. Is that a void that needs to be filled or is it just a category that we never needed to deal with to begin with? Well, it is sort of a void, but it's immediately filled by you living your life, doing things, figuring out what gives you enjoyment, what you want to do in life, and then working toward it. And if you want to fill it in some way, you could say that instead of high self-esteem, think in terms of unconditional self-acceptance, accepting yourself as the imperfect human you are, mistake-making person like all of us, and also work on self-discipline, working hard, facing discomfort, frustration, in order to get what you want, uh, rather than trying to get being a worthy person carry you through. So self-discipline rather than self-esteem will generally lead to a better life. Wonderful. Is there anything else you wanted to add to this topic? Yes. There's a famous uh, psychologist named Nathaniel Brandon who's written volumes on self-esteem. And the error he makes, he thinks high self-esteem under certain circumstances is a very good thing. But the error he makes is he says self-esteem springs from our actions. When we act worthy, when we act with integrity, when we act uh, self-assertively, then we automatically get self-esteem. So that's more of a behaviorist model. He doesn't see it's what we tell ourselves about acting with integrity or acting responsibly or acting assertively uh, that leads to our emotions and high self-esteem or low self-esteem. It doesn't spring from anything uh, as if just our actions create self-esteem. So it's important to see the basic premise here, and that is it's our thinking that causes our emotions, not our actions. So if you have low self-esteem, depressed, anxious, look to your thinking, and especially your irrational thinking, your must, shoulds, demands, ideas in your head, and then question, challenge, and contradict those. Michael really is a fantastic resource. If you want more of this, please subscribe to our channel. We try to update as often as possible. And if you have any questions, please contact us at rebtadvocates at gmail.com. Again, that's rebtadvocates at gmail.com. If you're interested in any of Michael's work, go to 3minutetherapy.com. Until then, see you next time.